So I was literally sitting down because I wanted to do a lyrical breakdown of some of the tracks on Logic's new album. And then the James Charles subscriber count feed versus Tati Westbrook subscriber count popped up and I opened it up and I'm like, oh my God. And I had so many questions that I wanna bring up as a topic of conversation. So today we're gonna to be talking about something called schadenfreude. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at the YouTube community and try to turn this mess into a message. Because what point is watching things like that subscriber count behind us if we're not trying to learn from them and apply it to our everyday life? So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, like I said, this right here popped up on my screen, I'm like, what is what is this? And I clicked on it, right? Obviously I've heard about how many subscribers James Charles is losing, how many Tati is gaining. She, she just passed seven million, right? But that's not what was fascinating to me. What was fascinating to me is that right here, right here in this, in this live stream, there are over 20,000 people, okay? That is one third of a football stadium sitting in a live stream right now watching these numbers. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I remember when the drama get in happened last year with like Manny, MUA, and Laura Lee, and seeing things like this, but there was maybe like hundreds or maybe a couple thousand. This has 20,000 people. And just when I imagine that many people, I just have so many questions. Some of you who have been long-term like rewired soldiers, you know that I, I kind of just take a look at, at human behavior and our thought processes and I'm just like, what's going on? So when I saw this, I was just like confused and interested and I, I started like looking on the internet to try to see like, is there something that makes sense? So we are going to be talking about schadenfreude, all right, and I hope I'm saying that right. I actually did like the Google like thing a few times to try to see if I can hear it. Schadenfreude, schadenfreude. But anyways, I, I, it, it kind of reminds me of just like people who would go to the viewing of somebody like getting the electric chair, right? Like. This, this kind of feeling of justice being served. Now, what is schadenfreude? Schadenfreude, just the, the, the loose definition of it is getting, getting pleasure out of somebody else's pain, right? And I was trying to look for something a little bit more fitting for this situation because there are some people who just get natural pleasure out of seeing other people's pain, but this is a different case because it's when like, like karmic justice is being served and we're gonna talk more about karmic justice in a second. So it's a little bit different with the James Charles and Tati Westbrook situation. And yeah, I ended up stumbling across this Psychology Today article that kind of breaks down why, why we get pleasure from this, all right? So this article from Psychology Today, I'll link it down in the description below, but here's an excerpt from it. The brain will choose pleasure over fear every time. Have you ever put someone down at work or at home? Just as it is beneficial to include someone in the group, make them a member and access their resources, it is also rewarding to exclude someone from the group, deny them access to resources, and thereby save more for yourself at that other person's expense. We are conditioned to avoid what we fear and seek what gives us pleasure. If alienating someone is pleasurable, perhaps it is also addictive. On some level, we know that to put someone down, to lie or to cheat is not a good thing to do. Yet, in little ways, we may do it with some frequency. A research team out of the University of Basel, I think I said that right, in Switzerland gave study subjects extra dopamine, the chemical of pleasure that all drugs and alcohol force the brain to release. People who got more dopamine were more likely to cheat if they knew they were not going to get caught or suffer any consequences. So yeah, what, what that's saying is, is schadenfreude can be somewhat addictive too. Pleasure comes from the dop dopamine, right? I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. You get addicted to that, right? And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if like people are like 
like getting off on this, like watching this, like every tick of James' subscriber count going down, people are like, yeah, yeah, right? Like this, this live stream, not only does it have 20,000 people watching it, but there's like super chats in there. And I'm like, why? Why, like no hate to whoever's hosting this live stream, like make your money, baby girl. But it's just interesting to me, the human behavior behind this. So when it comes to cancel culture in general, I, I feel that we have this, this, this thirst for like karmic justice, right? Where something happens or we find out somebody did something wrong, we want something bad to happen to them. We want that person to get what we feel like they deserve. But one of the things that just comes up in my mind is, in this day and age with social media and all of the public um, shaming and cancel culture and everything like that, like it's, I feel, I, this is my opinion, I feel like we've kind of gone to extremes, right? Like, don't get me wrong, James Charles did some awful things, not cool things, but I don't know, it just feels like there's not a spectrum. What else is very interesting about this whole situation is not only seeing James Charles numbers go down, but Tati Westbrook, her numbers going up. So it almost feels like in these situations, you know, we're, we're looking for a hero, like the one who, who leaked this information, the one who exposed the other person. I remember last year during the Dramageddon situation, um, and more <laughs> things have changed since then because Gabriel Zamora, he exposed Manny MUA and people had a similar subfeed count going. Same thing with James Charles and you saw Laura Lee and Manny going down, Gabriel Zamora and, and Jeffree Star going up, right? So one thing that's interesting to me is how, I think it's part of our tribal instincts is that people are always looking to pick sides, right? Like, this is something that like goes back to like when I was younger, not too young, but in my early 20s, but like when Twilight was around, right? Like team, team vampire guy or team wolf guy. <laughs> I forgot what their names were. Edward and wolf guy, right? Or, 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 ooh, 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 how about this? Going back to friends, right? When that whole thing, like they were on a break, you know what I mean? There was like team Ross and team Rachel. And I feel like, people try to align themselves when these things happen. And why else, why else? Like when you look on Twitter and there's so much talk and chatter going around this. And whenever these situations happen with anybody, you see people picking sides. And I feel like, I feel like people when like part of their just like evolutionary psychology, it, it's like, they're, they're vocalizing on social media, like on Twitter, like, here's whose side I'm on, right? I'm on this side, I'm on this side, look at me, I'm part of the tribe, I'm not part of that tribe, I am part of this tribe, accept me, right? And I would love to hear from all of you, like, if you're somebody watching this live stream, tell me down in the comments, like, I'm trying to understand, I'm trying to figure this out, like, dang, there's, there could be some great, psychological studies on this thing like why are you watching this right why do you why why are you so fascinated by this why are you intrigued by this why are you getting pleasure out of this why have you vocalized um whose side you're on if you're somebody who switched from james charles to tati like that's really interesting like why were you not subscribed to tati westbrook before why are you now right if because it almost feels like subscribing to a channel in this day and age, it's not even about you like that creator or you like their content. Sometimes it just, it's a sign of who you support, right? And nobody can really see who you support. Like, it's not like when you walk around on the streets, people see who you're subscribed to, so nobody else knows who you're subscribed to unless you tell them. So why is that? Like, why were these people not subscribed to Tati Westbrook before, but they are now? Because I'm sure, I'm sure, if you were subscribed to James Charles, you, you knew who Tati Westbrook was. So I don't know. And this, this place, this platform for me, 
I get to kind of like toss around ideas. I'm actually starting a podcast this coming week as well. And it's just like where I just want to throw out ideas and have conversations. Like I like working through these things in my head and have an audience where I can converse with you and just try to understand this because life is this crazy complex thing. Us humans, we act so strangely. It seems to defy logic and there's just so many questions out there. So I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this subject down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to get your name in the credits, get access to our monthly Q&A and some other perks and benefits and help support what I'm doing here, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.